In this video, we're going to talk about how to find the electron configuration of two elements that are exceptions. And if you're studying for a test, you want to know how to find the electron configuration for these two elements because they're commonly tested on a chemistry test. So let's begin with chromium. Now let's write down the sublevels. Chromium is in the fourth row of the periodic table. So I'm going to go to 4S. Now you need to know that the S sublevel can hold a maximum of two electrons. The P sublevel can hold up to six electrons. The D sublevel can hold up to 10. And F can hold a maximum of 14 electrons. Now what we need to do is we need to write up the electron configuration in such a way that the exponents add up to 24. So let's start with 1s. So we're going to have 1s2, and then after that, it's going to be 2s2, and then it's going to be 2p6, followed by 3s2, and then after 3s, it's 3p, then 4s. So it's going to be 3p6, 4s2. And right now, if we were to add the exponents, of the configuration, this so far will sum up to 20. So we need four more. After 3s, we move on to the 3d sublevel. Now we're going to stop at 3d4 because that's going to give us a total of 24 electrons. Now we're not quite finished. Let's draw the 4s orbital diagram and also the 3d orbital diagram. Each orbital can hold up to two electrons. So we have two electrons in the 4s level and four electrons in the 3d sublevel. Electrons prefer to be unpaired inside an orbital because two electrons, because they both have negative charges, they tend to repel each other. And so these two electrons, they're not too happy sharing a room together, particularly when there's an empty room here. So one of the two electrons is going to jump to this empty room and occupy it. And so this situation where all of the electrons are unpaired in the upper energy levels is more stable than having them paired in a force level. So it turns out that the electron configuration of chromium is 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, because we took an electron from the 4s and move it to the 3d. So it's 4s1, 3d5. So that is the electron configuration of the element chromium. So that's just one of those exceptions that you need to keep in mind. Now let's work on another exception, and that is copper. Go ahead and write the electron configuration for this element. So first, let's begin by writing the sublevels. So copper is found in the fourth row. Thus, we're going to go up to 4s. Let's put the numbers 2, 6, 10, and 14. So keep in mind, initially, we need to write the electron configuration in such a way that the sum of the exponents is 29, which correspond to the 29 electrons inside an atom of copper. So let's begin with the 1s level. So it's going to be 1s2. Following that, it's going to be 2s2. And then we're going to move on to 2p6, and then 3s2. After that, 3p6, 4s2. So right now, we have a total of 20. We need 9 more in order to get to 29. So d can hold up to 10, but we're not going to use all 10. We're going to stop at 3d9. 
So this is what we expect the electron configuration of copper to be. But something similar happens with copper like it did in chromium. One of the 4s electrons will move to the 3d sublevel. And so we're going to get this configuration. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s1, 3d10. So if you were to add the exponents, it will still add up to 29. So far this is 10, 12, 18, 19, 29. So this right here is the electron configuration of the element copper. So those are two exceptions you need to be familiar with when writing electron configurations of elements.